I have a friend who married her husband when he was following the Lord. Now he's into some strange teachings that are not found in Scripture. She's struggling on where to stand and how to raise her kids in the Lord and yet honor her husband at the same time. What would you tell this friend or, or wife in that regards? I don't know who you want to go start first. first. Um, sure. Go, Mars. Well, when we, we uh, read the question ahead of time, obviously my first thought is First Peter 3. And if you've been around the Bible or church any, I, I'm sure that you are familiar with that passage. Um, but the one thing that I want to en encourage you with before we get into that is to read First Peter 2, the verses ahead of that. Because it speaks about Jesus, and it speaks about him in such a way um, that, you know, he patiently took uh, all these things that were given to him, and he, he bore our sins on the cross because of that. And it, at the end of it, it says, for we are like sheep going astray, but now we have returned to the shepherd and overseer of our souls. And so the first thing I always want to remember before I go into this passage is, to, is that I am supposed to uh, look like Jesus to everybody. That's my, that's my first goal is to be like Jesus to everybody. And when we speak about a husband here in First Peter 3, it says, Wives, likewise be submissive to your own husbands, that even if some do not obey the word, they without a word may be won by the conduct of their wives when they observe your chaste conduct accompanied by fear. So my first admonition is how can you win your husband to Christ? So whether he is a full-on believer and just struggling in a sin and not obeying the word of God in certain areas of his life, how do you win him back to the Lord? If he's not walking with God at all, he's never made a commitment to God, you do the same thing. How do you win him for Christ? And it sounds like in the same, uh, I'm going to apply that to this same situation. How does she win him back to Christ? Well, the first thing that we see is that our husbands are won by our conduct, it, notice the word observe there. It's something that's seen. And we women like to talk. That's what we like to do. We want to talk. Uh, we get together and we share our lives. We get together and we share problems. And we talk, 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 talk. And sometimes we want to do the exact same things with our husbands. And it doesn't mean we don't talk. It doesn't mean we don't share things. It doesn't mean we don't, we don't speak truth. It just means that once the truth has been spoken, we don't need to just keep talking about it. And that this gentleman can be won back to the Lord as he watches his wife's behavior. So how does she act towards him? Has she cut him off? Is she mad at him? Does she try to manipulate him? I mean, what are, I don't know some all the all the ins and outs of their relationship per se. So I can't really speak to that. But it says here, wives likewise. So in the same way as Jesus submitted his life to be to be hung on the tree for us, we are to do the exact same thing. We're supposed to submit our lives to God, submit our lives to our husbands, and allow them to lead our home. So. Number one, your husband can still lead your home. You just are not supposed to violate scripture. And that and how you deal with that is the same way I did when Mitch wasn't following the Lord. Love you, honey, but I'm sorry. I need to do what God said. And we, we share this all the time. He wanted me to lie on our taxes because that's what we'd always done. And I told him, no, I'm not going to do that after, after I got saved and he wasn't. And he was pretty upset at me, but I held my ground, but I did it respectfully. You know, didn't call him a jerk, and I didn't, um, be, you know, I wasn't mad at him afterwards, and I didn't try to manipulate him uh, or anything like that. I just said, I'm sorry, I respectfully declined because God tells me I'm not supposed to lie. So there is going to come a time where you're probably going to have to speak truth, but you have to be wise in speaking the truth, too. So you cannot negate the fact that you need to respect your husband as your, as your head. So be respectful in your tone of voice, be respectful in your mannerisms, be respectful with your face, be respectful and pray don't forget to pray 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 but he can be one as he observes your behavior it says here um and it's okay for you to teach your children so if your husband says i don't want you to teach them what the bible says i want you to teach them them this then that's where you respectfully say i'm not going to do that and that's how you do it so can you think of anything else uh i i love the whole idea where you say we're just likewise you know we're to mm -hmm. act like jesus in the fact that jesus submitted his life unto the yep. point of death yeah and so he didn't get on that cross you know he wasn't forced up there he didn't complain he didn't grumble he submitted and he was obedient to the point of death mm -hmm. and so if jesus has to be put to death i have to be put to death and i i think sometimes the whole submission as a wife it's as long as they're kind as long as they do what i ask as long mm -hmm. as they're godly as long as they're and that's not what the passage says we're to submit 
and if it says that they'll be won over and so mm-hmm. it's applying to somebody who's not being godly in that in that manner so i think that um that would be the first thing the other thing i would encourage would be to um in respect would be to hold your tongue in the way you speak about him yep. to others just because so often it's easy to go to your friends and go to everybody and let everyone know your husband's a fool and let him know and you know find someone that you trust find someone who's wise who loves the lord who has good counsel you know scripture is really clear that um in the multitude of counselors there's wisdom mm-hmm. find someone who can give you biblical counsel and confide in that person and let them encourage you on how to treat your husband because sometimes in that moment you're going to feel crazy that that craziness is going to come because you're just going to be so passionate and your feelings are not going to be true and so i would encourage you that but also like marcy said prayer i think prayer Mm -hmm. would be the biggest thing um we want everything and we want it right now and so it's like today how do i fix him and you know what you might not see victory in this you might not see your husband's heart change for quite a while down the road but you just have to be faithful in prayer because scripture says, just go and ask and God can hear you. And it, he doesn't, you know, ignore the fact that um, you have this need right now, but it just might not be resolved immediately. Mm-hmm. So um, have endurance in that. Keep praying and keep praying and be faithful. You be faithful in your conduct. And so it's not about his conduct. It's right. about your conduct. Yeah. And so. And I think I think I can I can speak for all of us if our spouse decided uh, all of us sitting in this room if our spouse decided to start believing in unbiblical doctrine there would be words we yes, would, we would have absolutely. to talk about things right absolutely. and we would have to share the truth and we'd have to like you said get some counsel on how we could go about doing that so um, I want to be very clear it doesn't mean that you don't speak truth we, you know we're our husband's helper too and and really all of scripture applies he's my brother in the Lord he's my nearest neighbor. So I always think of Galatians six one when when my you know it says if your brother's caught in a trespass you who are spiritual go to him in spirit of love and fear hoping to win your brother, so my hope would want to be to win my husband back to biblical standards. But I also want to because I, I don't know the person I don't exactly what the the thing is that this man's now saying or doing that's not biblical. Sometimes we have to be very very careful with that. There's a lot of times women will think that men are being unspiritual and some of the are unbiblical and some of the things they're asking when really they're not. So again, you have to, to you have to get the word of God out and you have to say, my husband believes this about the Bible, and you need to work it through, work it through and find the answer for that. Make sure that um, maybe what he's saying is true, and maybe what he's saying isn't true. So does that make sense? What I'm saying is mm-hmm. just be careful to not. Um, just you know, kind of throw throw it away. Maybe there is something that um, he's concerned about or whatever. So I know take this, it to the word. Yeah, I know this is uh, through a friend, but um, if they have tuned in to Sunday mornings, Pastor Steve's going through Esther, and he's highlighting on how Esther wins her pagan husband. Yes, for the will of God and the way you honor him, the way mm-hmm. you hold back your tongue, the way you uh, respect him, and. Um, it's a very good Bible study to go through yeah. for someone in this situation. So yes. um, the mm-hmm. last at least two, three, maybe even longer weeks, um, check out those studies because this is what he's And I love to. how you said that because it says in verse uh, 4 that she's supposed to have a quiet and gentle spirit, which is precious in the sight of God. Mm-hmm. And that quietness is just you know, like a still mountain lake. And, and basically the flavor that I get from it is that I'm trusting God. So God, my husband is not going to be able to withstand God for very long, Right. And, and so I'm trusting the Lord for my marriage and for my husband. And I fell in love with him, and I can love him through all of this stuff. So w- love him. Win him back into the kingdom. Be loving. Be gracious. Help him. But speak truth.